Welcome everyone to Redecor's first podcast where we're going to explore the fascinating world of design and its aesthetics. I'm Emma and I'm going to be your host today for this episode. And in this edition, we're diving into the world of Wabi Sabi, which is a style that celebrates imperfection and the beauty of the natural world. Uh, joining us today is uh, Anika. She is an expert on Japanese culture and also Ridicor CS team lead, our uh, Jen, our live team content team lead as well, who crafts immersive designs inspired by the Wabi Sabi. And she's also an interior designer, so she's going to give us those little tips. And Thomas, our 3D artist who brings those designs to life. So welcome, everyone. Hello. 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 I see we're all excited. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, let's just start. Um, Jen, could you share more about the origins of Wabi Sabi? Yeah, sure. Uh, Wabi Sabi finds its roots in 15th century Japan, emerging within the tea ceremony culture under the influence of a tea master, Sanoruku. Uh, wabi reflects the simplicity of living in nature, while Sabi is tied to the beauty found over time. Wow, it's so deep. I mean, like you never think how design style has, you know, those roots. So, actually, Anika, if we go really deep into the Japanese culture, how does wabi sabi actually like the philo- the philosophy behind extend into daily life and tradition ceremonies of the, the Japanese culture? Well, yeah, wabi sabi isn't just a design thing. It's more like a lifestyle. Uh, take the tea ceremony, for example. It's like a living example of Wabi Sabi in action because you see humility, simplicity, and appreciation for imperfections built into these traditional rituals. Wow, I like that. <laughs> it sounds good. And uh, how does Wabi Sabi Wabi Sabi actually impact other Japanese art forms beside, you know, the tea ceremony? Are there stand standout examples or? Anything like that you can share? Oh, for sure. Uh, Wabi Sabi is everywhere in Japanese art. Like uh, you'll find it in flower arranging. The Japanese call it ikebana. You can find it in calligraphy, which is shodo in Japanese, and uh, even in architecture. And uh, they're all about that natural beauty and keeping things simple. It's not just a design thing. It's a whole attitude that goes into everything creative they do. Well, I think yeah, Wabi Sabi might be uh, my favorite design style yet. Um, but let's actually talk about more practical ways uh, to infuse Wabi Sabi into our design. So, um, Jen, what are some key tips you think our listeners would like to hear? Yeah, we can have a look at the, this month design. Uh, we're embracing imperfection, opting for natural color palette, using natural materials, simplifying design, appreciating the patina of time. So in general, connect, connecting with nature. Yeah, I think the whole idea of embracing imperfection is so beautiful, like the simplicity of it and you know, making things that are not perfect, maybe a little bit perfect is nice. So um, Thomas, as a 3D artist, how do you incorporate you know, imperfection into your designs and you know, generally for Wabi Sabi? Well, uh, imperfection is about celebrating uniqueness. Um, as a 3D artist, we like to introduce a symmetry, irregularities, and the distinct character of um, handmade elements. I think it makes it very special if it looks like it's handcraft and not just a computer game. And ensuring that each piece tells its own story. Wow, that's good. <laughs> well, piece we just seems to you know, be the best one yet. So um, can you tell us more about the color palette inspired by Wabi Sabi? Uh, Wabi Sabi uh, really gets from earth, muted tones, browns, soft grays. It's like about nat- nature and the connection to it. Um, colors may, may, may mimic what we have around us, creating a serene and ground atmosphere within our living space. It's, it's awesome. All right. I have to agree, honestly. I think um, natural elements, like the color... And like the browns and the greens, as you said, I feel like we can find these most in everyone's home as, you know, natural is something that you can always put another color and mix and match. So it's really interesting 
you know, like Wabi Sabi places a significant emphasis on those natural materials. So, Jen, how do you think our listeners can put those in their designs? You know, maybe also daily, day to day, but not only like redecor designs. Yeah, I'd say by choosing furniture and decor made from wood, stone, and other organic elements, uh, it will bring warmth and texture. Uh, unfinished or weather surfaces uh, enhance our authentic city and connect us with the natural world. Okay. And um, like when thinking about simplicity in design, um, how can our audience embrace you know, minimalism and appreciate the beauty of uh, craftsmanship, like uh, Thomas said uh, prior? Yeah, Wabi Sabi design encourages decluttering and focusing on essential elements and uh, handcrafted items like pottery and woven textiles add a delicate touch, celebrating the beauty of simplicity and craftsmanship. Cool. And um, Thomas, the, the, the patina of the time is a unique aspect of Wabi Sabi. So how can our audience appreciate that in their design? I think choosing elements that uh, grace uh, that age gracefully. Um, just think that how would you like to have wood, like distressed wood or vintage pieces in your house? I uh, just think it adds character and history to the space. It's not just a blank box. Uh, it's about valuing the stories of the objects. Um, I think it's awesome to have things with that carry time and history behind them. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I I really have to agree and like. Jen, um, how about connecting to nature? Like, how does Wabi Sabi foster that connection over time? Yeah, bringing the outdoors and through potter, potted plants, botanical prints, or natural fibers creates harmony. And uh, also, Wabi Sabi encourages a close connection with the natural world, fostering a calm and balanced atmosphere. Great, that, that sounds good. <laughs> it's really fascinating actually to learn how Wabi Sabi encourages that connection to nature. And Anika, can you like elaborate more on how this connection is really deeply rooted in Japanese culture? How does the, the Japanese appreciation for nature really manifest its way in Wabi Sabi designs? Well, like you said, Wabi Sabi is all about respecting nature and bringing it into your home. And the Japanese use this word shisen, it's for both nature and natural world. And basically, their like a basic idea is to find peace and calm in the natural world. And they've been doing it for ages. So when you see that cool natural touch in their designs, it's, it's not just trendy kind of thing. It's rooted in their deep connection to nature. But uh, it's not just about design. Uh, what I personally find super fascinating is the constant respect that Japanese people got going on. They respect everything from their ancestors to their family members and even the city around them. It's like a big thank you to life, you know. And this idea comes from uh, Shintoism, which is their traditional religion. And it's all about purity, harmony and thinking about community and its peace before individual. So it's not just the design thing, it's a whole way of life that makes everything, everything richer in its like an imperfect stillness. Well, I, I don't know, I feel like the thought of combining everything, you know, nature and life and, you know, putting yourself second, I, I don't know, it, it kind of moves me because when people think about, you know, interior design, I'm not sure it would be the first thing they think about or like, the idea of making things so deep, but I think it's really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm actually happy, you know, uh, Wabi Sabi is opening um, 2024 for Redecor to be, you know, our first uh, <laughs> a theme for our season pass this month. And you know, like remember that Wabi Sabi is not about perfection. It's not about embracing the beauty of imperfection. Like, the authenticity of the natural materials and the simplicity of design it i don't know it means a lot and i just wanted to say like thank you so much uh annika and Jen and thomas for really shedding light on you know how the world of wabi sabi meets us in redecor and uh, to our listeners i feel like this short introduction you know it just really helps um connect more and you know help us design in a maybe in a better way or just even in thought 
of how things are uh, thought, you know, when they thought about it. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. And I hope that you will design with the seasoned materials in the best way. And until next time, embrace the imperfect and let your design tell your story. So bye. Bye.